What's up guys, as you can see I have the newly released iOS 5 running on my iPad 1 and in this video I just wanted to give you a rundown of some of the new features and some of my thoughts on how I feel about the new OS as an operating system in general in this live review. Um, again, this iOS is not going to be released until September, so if you are not a developer you are going to have to wait. But I actually did get my hands on the iOS 5 developer beta, and that is how I am running it. If you are not a developer, you cannot get this yet. You're going to have to wait until September. So on that note, um, let's get to the new features. First off, the feature that a lot of you guys have been waiting for, Notification Center. To access the Notification Center, I'm sure you guys know what it is. I'm sure you saw the WWDC. You simply slide your finger down from the top of your device like this. And there's Notification Center. You can see all of your notifications. So simply swipe through all of them and it lists them according to the app. As you can see, I have some Facebook notifications, mail, and score center notifications. When you get a new notification, I do not actually have one, but it will show up on the lock screen right here. And you can simply slide across the notification to access that app. And again, the notification center, simply slide down. You can see all your notifications. Simply tap on one to get to that certain notification. And it works from anywhere, as you can see, pull down and uh, you will see all of your notifications wherever you are. Simply click it and it will bring you to the new app. It's very helpful. I like this a lot more than the previous method. It's a lot more, less obtrusive. Um, it's a lot more uh, useful and I think people will like this. Um, it seems like they copied it from Android a little bit. But I actually do like the interface a lot more. Um, they organize it by app and it's not just a big mix. Um, and you can also manually sort it by time. As you can see here, if you go to notifications and settings, you can sort notification center manually by time or turn off all of these um, notifications. As you can see, you can view it on a lock screen, show the recent items. And if even if you want to, you can turn off this new notification style and simply go back to alerts by clicking here which will bring up the old notification style. I don't know why you would want to do that but you can if you want so you can turn off the notification center. Overall it's a lot more helpful than the previous notification center and the way that the notifications were. I think it's a big improvement. And Just to give you an example, it does work anywhere. Um, say I'm playing a game like Angry Birds Rio here, I'll let load up. As you can see, you simply swipe down from the top and all your notifications are still there. So you can access your notifications from anywhere and it really is a big improvement from the previous notification center. Next up, we have iMessages. As you can see here, I have iMessages on my iPad and basically what iMessages is, is a new feature in iOS 5 very similar to BlackBerry Messenger for iOS. It allows you to send text, picture, video, uh, uh, SMS, contacts, anything from iOS device to iOS device as long as both users are using iOS. Now this is similar to text messaging and on the iPhone this is actually built into the text messaging app. Um, it's going to save a lot of people a lot of money on SMS because instead of sending a text message to another person who has an iPhone, you can simply send them an iMessage which is basically BlackBerry Messenger as I said before. I know this is very popular in BlackBerry so it is great that they brought this to iOS. I'll go ahead and open it up here. I do not actually have any contacts yet because I don't know anybody else that has the developer preview. But basically, all you need to do is click new message here and a new message will pop up. Type in your contact here, then just type your message, blah, 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 and uh, it, will it will send it to the contact. As you can see, you can also attach photos and videos here. Um, and I'll, I'll show you just how that works. I'll, I'll paste in my logo here and I'll say use. And as you can see, it pastes it inside of the message. So basically, you can send anything to any iOS, iOS uh, excuse me, user, and it's really user friendly. It reminds me a lot of BlackBerry Messenger, and I'm really looking forward to this. You are going to get like read and delivered um, notifications when you send a message, and I'm really looking forward to this. It's going to save a lot of money, a lot of time sending SMS messages. And as you can see, you can change the settings here. In settings, you can turn iMessage on and off. Um, you can send read, read receipts. You can show the subject field, blah, blah, blah. So that is iMessage. It's going to be a lot like BlackBerry Messenger, and I'm really, really excited about that. I think a lot of people will like that. Next up, we have Newsstand. As you can see, um, you click here, and a little pop-up comes up. It's kind of like a folder. But it's new basically what Newsstand is, is a magazine and book reader for your 
iOS device. Um, as you can see, store is actually not available, but they are going to have a store where you can download magazines, etc. And it says right here in the middle, I don't know if you can see that, it says you can download magazines and, and newspapers in the App Store. So I don't have any magazines right now, but that's basically essentially going to act as a news reader for the iOS device. I think it's going to work well. It's going to work a lot like iBooks, and I think people are going to like it. Um, I'm not too big of an e-reader myself, but I think overall it will be a great improvement. Next up, we have an app called Reminders. I'll go ahead and open it up here. Basically, what Reminders is, is a to-do list for iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch. Um, it's going to use the Notification Center, and you can basically type in any tasks that you need to do here just by clicking the Add button right there. And essentially, you type in a task. You can click the little checkbox here to tell you when you're done, um, and it will go into Completed Tasks and the reminders will list all the tasks that you have added. You can also sort them by date. As you can see, it has a calendar here. Um, I'll go to edit, and you can also delete lists straight up of all your reminders here in the left, um, which is kind of cool. Yeah, overall, another cool feature about reminders is if you add a reminder, you can say, ha ha ha, then hit return and be done. When you click the reminder, um, it can actually tell you to remind you at a certain time of day or a certain location which I think is really cool basically you could set a reminder when you're leaving a certain state or something to remind you to do something when you leave that location and it will actually notify you through the notification center so I think this app is really cool um, I really was looking for a to-do to -do list for my actual iOS devices and this one helps a lot it's just a lot easier to have it built in and with this new functionality I think it'll work really well um, reminding me when to do stuff at certain times so I'm really looking forward to it I think it's going to be awesome and a lot of people are going to enjoy it. Next up we have complete Twitter integration. As you can see here if you go to settings you have a new Twitter tab. If you click that Twitter tab it will have a Twitter button here where you can click to install the app from the App Store which as you can see I already have it installed. It says installed and once you do this all you need to do is sign in once in the actual operating system and as you can see I, I am actually signed in. Well, let me show you how this works. Basically um, they added new Twitter integration for all of the apps throughout the whole operating system. Now if you have an iPhone or an iPod Touch you can actually take photos and straight geotag them to uh, Twitter and send them up. As you can see here um, I'll pick this Apple photo. Basically all you need to do is click the little share button on your device and as you can see you have a new tab that says tweet. Go ahead and click tweet. And up will come Twitter um, with, the, with the photo attached to the right, as you can see. And you type ha 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 or something, whatever message you want. Send it off. Just click send and it will send it off to Twitter. Um, I've been using this a lot and it is awesome. Um, you can do this within any app that supports Twitter. Um, but photos is the best app. You can simply take a photo, geotag it, and upload it to Twitter. Um, and overall, it, like this works really well. Like if you're in Safari or something, and you see an article that you want to tweet, simply uh, click the share button and click tweet, and it can go straight off to Twitter. You're not going to have to copy and paste the link or go straight to the Twitter app. You can simply upload it directly to Twitter throughout the whole integrated operating system. And I really think this is going to help a lot of people. I know it helps me, and I think a lot of people are going to like this. So I'm really excited about that. Next features I can't really show you. Um, the camera. Basically, they updated the camera to actually include better features. You can adjust better editing features, like you can adjust red eye. You can crop your photos now, etc. You can. It's a lot closer to Photoshop for mobile editing. Also, they added the ability to turn off HDR and other settings straight from within the app and you can also use the volume up and down buttons on the side of the device here to take a photo which I know was a feature a lot of people wanted it's on a lot of Android devices and I was looking forward to that too for my iPod touch so I'm sorry I can't show you that guys but those are the new camera features a lot of people are looking forward to that and I am too I'll let you know when I get iOS 5 with my iPod touch so that I can actually show you those features. Um, next up is Photos. Um, they did tell me that they added better editing ability on the photos. I'm not sure if I can show you that, but uh, let's let's see here. If I go here, um, yeah, I'm not sure I can actually show you that either, but as I said before, they added new abilities to crop your photos, remove red eye, etc. Um, and they made photos a lot easier to edit. 
Um, also, there's a new thing called Photo Stream, which I also cannot show you, but basically every time you take a photo, it will show up in your albums here. And essentially that is uploaded to iCloud. If you guys don't know what iCloud is, basically it's the new service that's included with iOS 5 that allows everything that you take on your device to be uploaded straight to the cloud and synced to all of your devices. So basically all your music, all your apps, all your photos, all your information and mail, contacts are all synced to the cloud and then sent back down to all of your devices, which is very helpful. So essentially if you take a picture on your iPad or iPod Touch or iPhone, it is sent straight to the cloud and push to all your devices for editing and for viewing which is very cool um, it's completely free photo stream is gonna be completely in the cloud and I'm really looking forward to this and it's just gonna be a blast um, I'm not just speaking of of in the cloud I'm gonna show you iTunes real quick um, iTunes and the App Store are also in the cloud as you can see here when you load iTunes you have a new purchase tab if you click that tab it will show you all of the songs that you have purchased that are not actually on your iPad. As you can see there's a new tab up here, all and not on this iPad. And once you click the not on this iPad tab or all, it will show you the songs that you have actually downloaded and as you can see I can view all the songs I've ever downloaded from iTunes. Simply click the artist, it will load the songs and as you can see if you click download all Everclear songs or whatever the artist is, it will download straight to your device. Um, I think this is really cool. You could basically um, sync everything on all of your devices over the cloud. Um, also, your devices are going to be allowed to use um, Wi-Fi sync. So if your computer is on, you're never going to have to use a USB cable anymore. Um, you're only going to have to sync over Wi-Fi. And overall, I'm really, really pumped about this, guys. Like, I know I'm getting a little excited, but Wi-Fi sync and USB cables. USB cables were getting really old, and I needed Wi-Fi sync very badly. So I'm really pumped that everything is in the cloud. Um, and it's going to be pushed to all of your devices, so I can't wait personally. Um, and I know a lot of you guys are actually really excited about this as well. Um, and yeah, that is basically a feature a lot of people have been waiting for, so I'm glad they finally released it. Um, lastly, some smaller features that they released in Safari first. They actually uploaded, updated Safari a little bit. They added tab browsing. As you can see, if you click the little tab here, you can add tabs um, and simply load whatever you want on the tabs. Simply click the little X here to remove them. Um, and also they added a read later section so like if you go to let's say apple.com here I'll load it up. It's also a lot faster as they updated the speed as you can see. Um, but if you go to apple.com again they added some new features. If you click the little share button here um, you can see that they added the new tweeting as I said before and you can also add to reading list which if you click the reading list um, it will up and you go to your bookmarks as you can see it will simply save the page there in a tag for you to read later in your reading list so basically you can tag pages that you want to read later it's a lot easier um, and overall Safari is a lot faster you can tweet directly from it and they added tab browsing which is nice lastly some other features that I've noticed um, in mail when you go to compose a new mail message um, you can type in like blah 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 um, when you actually hold in there and select it as you can see you can actually replace um, quote set the quote level by indenting it or you can actually make it bold italics or underlined which is a feature a lot of people have been wanting for a while and I really like it you can also edit the CC and BBC and the two information more in depth um, so overall they just improved the mail app a little bit and made it a lot easier to use and lastly, the last thing I noticed with iOS 5 is that they actually split up some of the icons and made them nicer. Like, as you can see, they no longer have the iPod icon on any of the iOS devices. They actually split it up into music and videos. So when you open up music, it's just a new interface, a new layout, especially for iPad. Um, and it just lists all your music rather than having the iPod and the videos combined. So that is kind of cool, but overall, guys, that is iOS 5. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little long, so thanks for watching. Thanks for staying tuned. I really enjoyed making it, and I really enjoy iOS 5, actually. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. For more video reviews, especially on iCloud and macOS 10.7 Lion, be sure to just click the little button up there and subscribe, and be sure to rate thumbs up. I really appreciate it, guys. You guys really helped me out, and I love making videos for you. Um, if you have any comments, leave them in the description. And for more updates, be sure to follow me on Twitter, visit my website, and like me on Facebook in the description. This has been an iOS 5 beta preview review. 
Um, and again, the real operating system will be released in September. But hopefully you guys like this video, and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.